Complete blood count is fundamental diagnostic blood test. It gives us information about person's general health, about anemia, infectious disease or cancer sometimes, autoimmune disease, about allergy. We will discuss most important measurements of complete blood count. First is white blood cells. White blood cells are like soldiers. They protect our body from bacteria, from viruses and parasites. And when there is high white blood cells, it means infection in our body. So high white blood cells, high white blood count means infection or inflammation in our body. And when there is low white blood cells, it means bone marrow suppression in some cases by medications, for example, autoimmune disease in some cases, or cancers. And sometimes if there is severe infection, white blood cells count can be low also. So generally, infection causes high white blood cells, elevated white blood cell count. But if infection is very serious and very severe, white blood count can be decreased, opposite. It's possible, but most likely in most common cases when there is common cold or flu or other infections, white blood cells are elevated usually. Second most important measurement is red blood cell count, RBC. Uh, low RBC means anemia. Ro low RBC usually means iron deficiency anemia because it's most common form of anemia. Sometimes it can mean uh, blood loss or bone marrow uh, problems also. And when there is elevated red blood cells, it can uh, mean dehydration or heart disease or polycythemia vera. So if there is a low RBC it means anemia if there is elevated RBC it means polycythemia uh, it can be caused by dehydration just uh, not get enough fluid uh, it can be caused by heart problems but it can be caused by polycythemia vera also a third important measurement is hemoglobin and Hemoglobin transports oxygen. Uh, hemoglobin is part of red blood cell and it's transporter of oxygen. And low hemoglobin means anemia here also. And high hemoglobin means polycythemia. So here's the logical question that if red blood cell count also means low RBC means anemia, high RBC means polycythemia, and same is in case of hemoglobin. Low hemoglobin means anemia, high hemoglobin means polycythemia. Then why we need to measure RBC and hemoglobin both separately? We, we can just measure uh, RBC, for example, or just hemoglobin. We need to measure these two different components because when we get combination of RBC count and hemoglobin, we can think about more specifically what disease is represented. For example, when we have low RBC or low erythrocytes or low uh, red blood cells, and we have also low hemoglobin, it means normocytic anemia, and normocytic anemia usually is sign of blood loss, for example, internal bleeding. Or it can be caused, uh, caused by chronic disease or kidney problems. So if RBC are reduced and hemoglobin also low, it, is, it looks like blood loss. If RBC is normal or low and hemoglobin is very low, hemoglobin is disproportionately low, it is called microcytic anemia and it is sign of iron deficiency anemia, it's most common form of anemia. So when RBC is normal or low and hemoglobin is disproportionately low or very low, then it is iron deficiency anemia. And third combination, 
when RBC is low but hemoglobin is high or normal, we have macrocytic anemia. Macrocytic anemia means when uh, red blood cells are bigger and larger than normal. And it is caused by vitamin B12 deficiency or folate deficiency. So that's why we need to measure hemoglobin and uh, red blood cells independently because when we get combination we already know what is the problem so if we have low rbc but high hemoglobin it means person has vitamin b12 deficiency if we have uh, normal uh, rbc or low rbc and very low hemoglobin then iron deficiency anemia if we have low rbc and plus low hemoglobin is normal cytic anemia and we should start searching blood loss we should start searching chronic disease or kidney problems that's why we need hemoglobin and hematocrit also important measurement is um what what is hema hematocrit hematocrit is just ratio between rbc and total blood volume so uh, red blood cells are lots of red blood cells or few red blood cells that's simple so when we have low hematocrit it means low red blood cell count and it means anemia or blood loss and when we have high hematocrit it means dehydration polycythemia or heart problem or kidney problem so hematocrit is simplification of uh, everything together this uh, red blood cell count or hemoglobin uh, it's just ratio how uh, what is quantity of rbc's into uh, into plasma or into water into blood volume that's a simple ratio so and fifth most common measurement is mean corpuscular volume mean corpuscular volume defines how big or how large is red blood cell it's large or macrocytic it's normal or normocytic or it's smaller one or microcytic and it, it's also helpful to define what kind of anemia we have we have microcytic anemia or macrocytic anemia if there is microcytic anemia it's iron deficiency anemia here and when there is macrocytic anemia is b12 or folate deficiency anemia if we have normocytic anemia is blood loss that's why i mean corpuscular volume we need and platelets platelets uh, are important to form clot blood clot so low platelet means increased risk of bruising or bleeding and it can be caused by bone marrow problems or autoimmune disease or uh, systemic lupus erythematosus for example or idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura uh, and high platelet count increase risk of thrombosis or clot formation and it can be caused by infections or rheumatoid arthritis or anemia sometimes by cancers cancer can stimulate production of platelets some cancers that's why platelets are important and now let's talk about white blood cell differentials we have five main types neutropils lymphocytes eosinophils monocytes and basophils and we will explain their function and when they are low or high when neutrophils are high neutrophils are first line defenders against bacteria and when neutrophils are high it's high likely about bacterial infection so if neutrophils are high we should think about bacterial infection and here is two measurements of neutrophils total neutrophils and a percentage percentage uh, more sensitive percentage means that if there is slightly elevated neutrophils percentage already um, already is elevated and total number is more correct in many cases because uh, percentage can be misleading because uh, percentage counts uh, neutrophils percent among other white blood cells 
So it can be misleading sometimes. But if there is important elevation of neutrophils, there is high probability of bacterial infection. That's why neutrophils is very important. About lymphocytes, lymphocytes are against viral infection. So if lymphocytes are elevated, it means viral infection. So lymphocytes are more specific for viral infection. Lymphocytes means viral infection. Neutrophils means bacterial infection. Lymphocytes for viruses. And monocytes, uh, monocytes are large cells. They, they, they are uh, precursor of uh, macrophages and they can digest bacteria, they can digest uh, cell debris, so they are very important cells. And when they are elevated, they, they also stimulate immune system. They are um, uh, they antigen, uh, they present antigen to immune system cells. So they are very important cells also. And when monocytes are elevated, it can be uh, caused by chronic inflammation, chronic uh, bacterial infection, for example, tuberculosis, chronic fungal infection. So monocytes, elevated monocytes means chronic infection usually. Or monocytes can be elevated after viral infection, for example, when, when there is recovery period already. So if there is recovery period after infection, monocytes can be high especially percentage of monocytes can be high if there's recovery period. Uh, and sometimes during autoimmune disease like uh, lupus, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and sometimes in cancers also, such as lymphomas and leukemias, monocytes can be elevated. And now about eosinophils. Eosinophils are high in case of parasitic infection eosinophils fight against parasites or uh, during allergy, asthma and allergy, eosinophils are high during asthma and when person is allergic, eosinophils are high and uh, basopils are sign of inflammation. Basopils increase blood flow and increase inflammation. So when there is basopils, it means uh, inflammation, it, it is high during allergic reactions and sometimes in case of chronic leukemias. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I hope uh, it's, uh, it's easier now for you to define and interpret blood tests. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for your watching. If you like my videos, please thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye for now.